Okay, people. So today I am joined by Avery Kid Waddle. Waddle? Uh, Waddell. Yeah. Waddell. Yeah. Wow. Waddell. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Avery Kid Waddell, the yes. um, writer and director of Why Men Are Clueless. Avery, yes. thank you for joining. Ah, thanks for having me. Really appreciate hey, it. No worries at all, man. No worries at all. I think probably the, the thing people want to know is, can you keep a girlfriend, my man? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I mean, what's your game really like, Avery? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I, uh, well, I, I guess maybe you should ask my wife. Uh, I've been married for over 20 years now, so uh, I guess I could keep a, uh, keep a girlfriend or a woman, but uh, <laughs> but I, that's more of a question for her than me. Okay, <laughs> but, um, okay. Yeah. should no, I ask I, you what her favorite color is? Uh, yellow, yellow, yeah. her favorite color uh, is yellow. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, no, no, I, I learned that the hard way, as was, yeah, as. Uh, as was illustrated in the film, that was taken from a real life uh, experience. <laughs> oh, shame! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Okay, so you 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 took life experiences mm -hmm. to help with the writing of this one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's um the film. Uh, so the film centers around uh, these four guys and. Um, and they're all different. You know, they all have their unique personalities. But uh, I always tell people I've been every single one of those guys at some mm. point. So I just took, uh, you know, di at different times in my life. I just took experiences and the way I was at different times and put them together in a script and kind of gave each period of my life its own uh, being, if you will, you know, for, for each one of the characters, the male characters and and took it from there yeah okay okay interesting yeah because it's, it's always um you you know you wonder about these things it, are, are characters based on friends family is it you know a, a part of your persona so okay so you've been all of these dudes i've been yes <laughs> all of them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for, for better or for worse yes <laughs> uh, uh, and have you dropped all of the lines that we heard in this film. <laughs> <laughs> um, the legs thing was I'm, like, oh, okay. almost <laughs> all of them, almost all of them. I must confess, I did make up uh, a couple of the lines that were dropped by uh, Ciela, the Ciela character. A few of his lines I never uttered in, in reality. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, yeah. that that's that must be why you're married. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I, I can't imagine uh, a marriage going well if I if I drop some of those lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh man. So, Avery, like, what made you decide to um, you know, do this film? How did it come about? Oh yeah, that's a great question. So, um. The the original I wrote the very first draft of this film years ago, actually, while I was living in New York. Um, and at the time, um, a lot of the films that were coming out that were featuring um, uh, that were featuring black people in the lead roles were usually, you know, um, hood type films or. Or, you know, or maybe it was a, a slavery type. It was just something that was always kind of downtrodden, kind of heavy and, you know, and all yeah. these kind of things. And 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 why I have no problem uh, with those stories being told, those stories need to be told. It's just that there's so much more, mm. uh, you know, there's just so much more. There's so many other stories that need and should be told as well. So I've always been uh, actually a big fan of Woody Allen movies. And um, and I was looking around and I said, you know, I've, I've never seen anything uh, like that featuring, uh, you know, uh, people of color. So so I, I, I started writing 
And um, and so, yeah, and so I created the first. And so that had to be 90, 1997, going maybe 1998. So a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So you wrote it back then, wrote mm -hmm. it in 97. So what were the hurdles with bringing this to life? Yeah. So the first hurdle was um, we we pitched it. I pitched it to a few studios and and, and got some interest. Um, there was a the, the major interest was from a company called back then. They're not around anymore. But back then they were called Sony Fine Line. Um, it was kind of like it, the independent film uh, wing of Sony. Of, uh, yeah. Sony movie studios. Yeah. And so they really dug the script and uh, and they they wanted to purchase it, but they wanted to purchase it outright and then do what they wanted to do with it. Mm. And I just felt no, especially with the reason why I wrote it. I felt like, nah, I want to make sure this story is told the way I want it to be told. So I, I wasn't I wasn't comfortable uh, giving up all control. And so um, I said, you know, I, I offered to take less money. Um, if they would allow me to direct it and and, and do these things, uh, but uh, they they weren't on board for that, and so that deal ended up falling apart, and um, and it just took a while. It um, you know went to other places, and it was kind of the same story at a couple of other places that came along and showed some interest. And I was just being <laughs> some people say I was just being stubborn, but but it was really important to me, you know. It was, mm. And um, and so I just stuck to my guns and. And then after a while, there was there was kind of no interest at all. And um, I got involved with other things and and I kind of put the script away. It was in mothballs for a long time. So um, I don't even remember what happened, but somehow someone brought up questions. And this was probably 2005 or 2006. And I said, oh, yeah, questions. And I went rooting through. <laughs> my, my closet and I found I found the script and I you know I took it all I took it out and I and I started reading over it and I said wow you know this was a pretty good script um but you know I I'd had so many more experiences by then and so many things that when I read it even though I was like yeah, it's a pretty good script I was like I want to make a lot of changes to it though as well <laughs> you know I want to I want to kind of bring it to where I am now and so I sat down and, and did a complete rewrite and um and then about four or oh, maybe four or five drafts later we're at where we are now with uh in terms of the script yeah, yeah. right okay yeah. now when you're shopping something like this around is there always a worry that a studio may turn it down but then develop something similar oh oh absolutely absolutely i mean that's um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 you, you try to take as many precautions as you can, you know, you, you get your work before you show it to anyone, you get your work copy written, mm. uh, you get it registered with the WGA. Um, I mean, you do everything you can, but that still only goes so far. I mean, at the end of the day, all they have to do is change a few things here and there. And, <laughs> and they can say it's theirs. I mean, the best thing you can do is, is to make sure you keep the paper trail. So when you do submit it to different studios and different people, make sure you have all of that trail showing that, hey, I gave this script to this person on this date and all this kind of stuff. So if they do do something similar, you can at least say, well, hey, this is just like my script. And as you can see, they read my script. I gave yeah. it to them. Here's the proof. You know, they copied my work, you know. So, um, yeah. So, but yeah, that's, that's always a worry. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. But that makes sense. That, that mm -hmm. I feel that's valuable information for people to, you know, what I mean, make sure you copyright and keep yeah. a paper trail. Yes, oh. absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, man. And um, is there the fault, right? Because you have other stuff come out, like, you know, what women want, what men mm -hmm. want, you know, mm -hmm. those type of films. And do you sometimes think, ah, I was too late or that's fine. Mine's still different enough for it to work. Yeah. Well, um, I had to make it different. So the, the fun, the interesting thing is when, when 
romantic films and uh, started to kind of become popular and they started, you know, featuring people of color. My first thought was like, oh, man, I had that 10 years ago. Like mm. you know, <laughs> now they're doing it. And, and I'm I was like, ah, you know, so there was a little <laughs> bit of a little bit of frustration, like oh, I was trying to do this so long ago. But um, I was happy to see it, though. You know, so I, I don't want to, you know, you know, it's it, it's as frustrating as it was, it was like, oh, I had a script like this, this. I was still happy to see it because like yeah. I said, the biggest thing was that kind of representation. Um, so what, but what I did was I just sat down, I looked at each film that came out, um, saw what the similarities were and went in and, and changed what I felt needed to be changed in mine. And, um, and yeah. And so, yeah. So, and, and that was, that was difficult because like I said, a lot of, um, and sometimes people might get confused because sometimes I might refer to it as questions. So I questions was the original title um, or the working title, if you will. Uh, it's now why men are clueless. But if that happens, that's what's going on. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not talking about a another project. Um, <laughs> yeah. So but um, but it was difficult because, like I said, everything in it was from a, was from some sort of personal experience. Um, except for those few lines from for Ciela. Uh, but it was all for some from some sort of personal experience. And so it was difficult to try to 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 change some of that stuff uh because you know I felt like ah it's too similar to this scene from this film. I don't want I don't want people to think that you know I'm copying or you know, so yeah, it's very important to me to try to be as unique as possible, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Even though, I, you know, the film industry, I would say, uh, as, or at least on a studio level, is very much a copycat industry, but um, but it's important to me not to be a copycat. So yeah, it's a great lens to try to make mine as, you know, uh, unique as possible. Yeah, there's, I, I think you do find that though, right? With certain genres, that there's a certain type of story that gets told a lot. Yeah. But I think it can be fine because when you have that story coming from different voices and different groups of people, it's never exactly the same. So you That's get a right. different slant on the story, which makes absolutely. it interesting. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I agree 1000%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was the thing that made you think, well, you can write and you can direct because you were you've been acting for boy you've been in the game man you've been putting in work you know, <laughs> yeah. you've done film you've done tv you've done video games yeah. and we feel we need to touch on those different experiences but you've been doing that so what was the thing that was like you know what i can write and direct um well you know for me i so uh i at i um attended nyu tisch school of the arts um, and my major was theater, uh, but I got an opportunity to take some some film courses and, and I got a chance to learn um, a lot about behind the scenes uh, on a film set. Um, so that was my foundation. But then, you know, as you just touched on, I've I've been fortunate enough in my in my career in front of the camera to have worked on a lot of different projects, a lot of different television shows and films and and things like this. And. Um, many of them were some really fantastic sets. And, um, you know, uh, one of the biggest things for me was I got an opportunity to work with Spike Lee. Um, mm. and, yeah, on a project called Sucker Free City. And Spike Lee was a tremendously open person um, in terms of sharing his knowledge. So I was very interested. In, I, I was... <laughs> I was trying to initially trying to like sneak around and kind of shadow him to watch how he does what he does, you know, and see what he's doing. And, and <laughs> but but eventually I worked up the nerve to kind of start asking him some questions about certain things, directing and all this. And he, he was extremely open and really helpful. So that was a you know, that really gave me a lot of confidence and kind of gave me a foundation. And and, you know, it was just after I'd been on enough sets, I just was like, I, I think I can do this. But I also, I didn't just jump right into trying to do a feature film uh, <laughs> either. Mm, yes, um, the short circuit. Exactly, yeah. So I did, um, I did what, I guess three, sh three short films, um, four short films before 
uh, I attempted the feature, but then I also did, I would film, I filmed like a few sketches and uh, I actually uh, directed a couple of music videos as well before uh, I went to tackle the feature. So yeah, I just kind of built up to it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, yeah, being able to break bread with Spike must have been incredible. It, yeah, it was. It was. Mm. It Did was. you get a chance to um, speak with uh, John Singleton because you did Snowfall? I did do Snowfall, but by the time I did it, John Singleton was no longer with us. He had passed oh. on by the time uh, I did the show. So, yeah, I believe John uh, Snowfall had six seasons and I was in I was on season six. Um, right. But John passed, I believe, during maybe the third or four, maybe the third season of the show. I believe something like that. Maybe even the second is when he passed. So I never got a chance to actually meet him mm. or, talk to him or anything like that. Yeah, I can't. I think it may have been the third. It was yeah. I was lucky enough that he came over to um london and he did a talk at the bfi ah, so okay. um yeah i i was lucky enough to hear him talk and it was man it was incredible yeah and the, the funny thing was you know he got a, a whole lot of tutorship and knowledge from spike as well you yeah know i mean yeah. spike's been spreading that love since day one he really has he really has incredible to see yeah it. yeah and he i you know it's the, the really cool thing about him is he seems to get a kick out of sharing the knowledge mm, you mm. know it's, you know especially if he can tell that you're eager to learn and you really want to learn he he's just very open and 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 will help whichever you know however he can which is you know it's fantastic he's, he's a great guy at that yeah yeah, yeah. And a fantastic director, obviously. I mean, oh you know, my god, he's, he's, one of the one of the yeah, he's, he's one of the best ever. I mean, as as directors go, yeah, mm. yeah. Like, what has your experience been like of that? You know, the 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 quest to gain knowledge because, you know, I think I've always been from the mindset of wanting to be in the room with the sharpest knives. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. you 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 turn around and you help those people up the ladder. Right, you invite them in the room because yeah. they're keeping you on your toes. Yeah, you know, I mean? it's not, it, 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 you know what I mean? Like, but some people have that harvest mentality where it's just like there's just room for me. Yeah, oh yeah, you can't, you can't be here. Yeah, so what's it been like navigating that? Oh, that is really that's a great question. Um, let me see. You know, it's that's been an interesting journey in my career because I've, you know, on one side, I've been extremely fortunate to have met some of the most wonderful and talented human beings who were like Spike Lee, open and willing to share. Um, another one I'll just mention because he just recently passed um, um RIP to Andre Brower. I got to work with him on, oh, uh, nice. on Homicide, Life uh, life on the Streets. And he's always been, for me as an actor, one of my top two favorite. I mean, I, I, I've i always been an extreme fan of his, of his work. And so I got a chance to work with him. And he was another one who was very open and willing to talk and just talk about the craft and all. And I got to, so I, I learned a lot from him. Um, about the craft um, yeah that's that's not surprising man that's not there's we got homicide life in the street over here yeah and i remember before that you know there, there were shows like new york undercover which yes I, I did that I, show as well yeah, <laughs> yeah. New, york, new york undercover was it was cool because you saw a black and latino lead that's right yeah. right and yeah that was like yo what it was okay. a game changer. Yeah. It was a game changer. Yeah. And they would they did try and hit issues, different issues yeah. that you weren't seeing anything else. That's right. Yeah. But yeah. Homicide life on the street was gritty. Yeah. And it was one of those first shows where you saw this gritty, you know what I mean, thing. And mm -hmm. there's this black police officer. Yeah. Yeah. And he's not someone's sidekick he's that's you know right. what i mean he's yeah, doing right. his thing he's unapologetic so it yeah. was just, seeing that was just like 
oh shit. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. This oh, is yeah. this is this is something different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And yeah, absolutely. Um, and so I had a lot of those, but then I on the on the flip side of it too, I've I've experienced the the um the downside of it where people were like, hey, nah, well, I mean, I've I <laughs> I guess the best way to describe it, there have been a couple of times where I've lost roles mm. um, because I'm not going to mention any names or anything, but a particular star had final say over casting. So um, I had really strong auditions. A lot of the producers and everybody really loved me. But since this particular star had final say, um, <laughs> they opted, they didn't want me because I was so strong and because yeah. of these things. And they're like, I have to stand out at all times. It's, it can only, there can only be one. And um, you've even heard uh, people like Eddie Murphy touch on it a little bit when he said, I remember he was talking about uh, when he was doing, um, uh, what's the film he did with Richard Pryor and 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 um, Red Fox and um, I don't know, Harlem Knights. Oh, Harlem, Harlem yeah. Knights. Yeah, yeah. Harlem yeah. Knights. And um, I remember him talk. He was talking about how there was a little bit of in the in the early going anyway, kind of a little between him and Richard Pryor, mm. uh, because and a lot of that stems from for most of this industry since it's been around. It, when it comes to to black people, especially, they've always kind of only allowed one or maybe two to kind of shine and have opportunities. Yeah. Um, and over time, it became a situation to where black artists started to fight to be that one or two, you know. Um, and yeah. it's, you know, that was, you know, it's very unfortunate. But, but you know, that's that's starting to turn. I mean, these days, uh, you know, you have a lot more, um, you know, black people and people of color producing their own works and, you know, getting stuff out themselves, writing their own stuff, so that that narrative is starting to to change a little bit. But yeah, that's um, yeah, that was tough. It's been that that's that's definitely been a tough thing to kind of navigate through my career um um and there are times too where i feel like if it if it was not that way if it had never been that way i probably would have been a lot further along in my career more you know more um mm. you know, most likely so yeah yeah that's been tough yeah yeah that that's always yeah because there was that point when it where it was either denzel yeah. will Lawrence for a minute, Lawrence right, Fisher, yeah, right, he, right. you know what I mean? He he yeah. was there for a little while, but then suddenly just disappeared. Yeah. yeah. Which was so odd. Yeah. And, and yeah, it was it was just like there's all of these white actors and actresses, but yeah. there could only be a <laughs> few black, a few yeah. Latin, a few Indian. Yeah. It was yeah. very bizarre. Yeah. It, the, the weirdest of things. Yeah. Yeah. But, Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 no. Go on. I was going to say, you know, a lot of it too, um, and this is one of the reasons why the representation. And when I originally wrote the script, it was so important to me to to show something else than what was being put out, because a lot of that um, stems from too is when it comes to uh, people who are not um, black or of color. A lot of what they learn about us is from television or film or what have you. Yeah. But it's it's such a narrow scope that they don't really get to to know us. And so they kind of view us in one way. And if whatever you're trying to present is not that way, they don't really know what to do with that. They're like, mm. I don't, well, is that even real? Who, who Who's going to want to see that? That's not how you really are, is it? But so they don't even, you know, because I, I remember we went I when we were pitching um, uh, why men are clueless. I remember we went to one studio um, meeting and met with an exec who loved the script. And um, I'm sitting in there with my producing partner um, and the exec walks in and he just kind of gets this weird look on his face and he goes, oh. <laughs> and so my producing partner and I look at each other and we're like, what was that? And uh, so he kind of sits down and it was so bizarre, so such a weird reaction, not like, hey, how are you doing or whatever, but like, oh, it's the first thing he says. So when he sits down, I say, um, 
is everything okay? Like what, <laughs> you know, what, what's going on? Everything all right? And he goes, you know, um, I, I didn't realize that uh, that you were black. And I said, yeah, I, I'm I'm black. Is what is that? Is that a problem? You know? And he, and he goes, no, it's it's not a problem. I mean, I I really enjoy your script. I just didn't know that it was a black script. And then he proceeds to say, I mean, you know, we already have our urban production for the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so he reads the script. He has no idea what color it is. He loves, you know, the people behind the creating of it are, and he loves it, wants to move forward. But just because the creators are black and he goes, oh, well, we can't do it now mm. because we only do one urban project a year. So <laughs> as good as yeah. the script is, sorry. I mean, you know, it's a lot of that. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> such a bizarre thing. I, I went to, um, a talk last year with the um, author Marily 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 oh, God damn it <laughs> Marily Blackman I pronounce her name awfully like okay. she wrote um, Noughts and Crosses and a whole very famous author okay. um, but she was uh, talking about you know the early days of trying to pitch stories mm. and that she'd take a story to a publisher and they'd be like love it love it could we make this a white family <laughs> yeah yeah you know, you know, yeah. well we've we've got one black story coming out already <laughs> so could we could we make them chinese right oh, yeah could they be latin yeah. like could they be and it was he's just like um how many white stories do you have coming out? Right. And they're yeah. like, oh, yeah. So couldn't we have more than one black story coming out? Right. You know, exactly. Right. It, it, it's right. that weird thing where it's just like, you know, the places will tick a box. Yeah. On whatever, you know what I mean, category yeah. it is. Is it disabled? Is it, you know, ethnic? Is it gender, yeah. religion? And then it's just like, well, we're done now. We're cool. We <laughs> yeah. don't have to do yeah. anymore. Right. No, no, people, you can see we're not one of those isms, right? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Good. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Just, yeah. We need to do just enough so we can show we're not racist. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But the, the thing is, though, right? With out the struggle, do you think you'd still be who you are? Because oh, that's okay. the one thing that I wonder about sometimes, right? Like, if I had 2020 vision, would I have pushed myself as much? Right, right? right. Would I have looked for certain, you know, opportunities, certain avenues? Would I have yeah. done this or that, right? If you know, there wasn't the racism. Would I have been as steadfast to be like, hell no, I'm going to do that thing. You're not going to yeah. stop me. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I yeah. want that. In an ideal world, you want to think, no, I would still be who I am, where I am. But sometimes I wonder, is this, was it some of that negativity that was the thing to make you strive for more? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, no. And I, I, as much as it pains me to say, if it wasn't for the struggle, I, I honestly don't believe I would be the person I am now. You know, I, I don't believe that I'd be the artist that I am now. Um, the struggle definitely played a crucial role in all that. And it's, you know, that's one of those things where it's very much a double edged sword. You know, yeah. it's, 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 I, I heard a saying one time that uh, struggle is God's way of showing he loves you. And I remember when I first heard it, because I actually heard that when I was relatively young and it made no sense to me. I was like, what? Ah, that's crazy talk. But it, struggle is how he shows his love for you? Nah, that sounds insane to me. Oh, man, he must love me. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. He must love me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but it's one of those things to where if you do fight through it, um, find a way, and get through it and do your thing anyway, you've been forged by fire. You know, mm. you've been, 
you're just you're that much stronger. You know, um, it's just like if you run a race um, and you have to start 200 yards behind everybody else, but you still catch them. <laughs> that means yeah. that says a lot. Right. You, you've you've had to become a lot stronger than those people you've caught to just get there. Right. And while mm. that's not fair, while it's it's unbelievably difficult and all these things, it on it does make you that much stronger, though. If you do yeah. it, if you can achieve it. So it's, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. I I, I heard a quote on um, Rogan one time, and it's something along the lines of hard times make hard people, but good times make soft people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and it's yeah. just like, yeah. how many, like, kids of billionaires have yeah. grown up to be like basically what their their parent was that's not right. many because the life was you know good i think mean, i feel there was a boxer or it might have been charles barkley but it was just like it, it's hard to be tough when you sleep on satin sheets <laughs> right yeah. and, and, and it's yeah. like how many times yeah. have we, we like seen like rappers or just yeah people and their first album was like fire right it, yeah but it blew up it yeah. blew up now they're rich yeah yeah it changes it changes yeah. the struggle isn't the same so they exactly. haven't got the fire to talk and spit like they did at the beginning yeah that's a great yeah that's a that's a great example yeah yeah absolutely yeah yes yeah, yeah. it's, it's uh yeah it's a weird one it's a weird it one because you don't want all the barriers, right? right? You don't want all the oppression and the hardship, but right, you yeah. you you do you do find that sometimes it can, you know, it it, it can strengthen you. And yeah, absolutely. You to that point, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. But yeah, so with the film. Right. So you've now some brought it up, you've got it back out. Mm -hmm. So then what happens? What's the because it's what 2013? So you know, we're still a decade away from now, right? So what was then the journey like to bring it to fruition? Oh man, so um, you know, after kind of having all of these meetings and things that would fall apart, um we then started trying to go to a couple, you know, individuals, high high net worth individuals, to see if maybe they'd be interested in maybe investing in getting the film made. Um, went and retooled it, worked with worked with a, a couple line producers to see, you know, how we could do the film for as as little as possible, so that we could make it more enticing to some of these individuals and. Um, and we we got a little bit of traction, but they would they would always have kind of really weird requests, you know, about like, oh, okay, well, what if we, you know, what if we like? I remember one guy said, well, what if we get someone who can play? Um, at the time, Key and Peele, their show was really popular, right. and uh, he says, well, what if we get someone like a Key or Peele or something like that, and they could play multiple characters in it. Uh, and I was like, but it's it's not that kind of a movie, though. It's mm. not that would be that's a completely different thing, you know. And so we were running into a lot of stuff like that. So finally, we were like, all right, I said, you know what, forget it. We're just we're going to get this thing done. And um, you know, I I I reached into my own pocket. You know, I had a couple of family members who were uh very generous and 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 helped out, and um we cobbled enough to uh, enough to get it done and 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 that's how we find we finally shot it you know um just had to finance it myself basically like i said along with a couple of very generous uh family members and and um yeah and 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 got the thing shot yeah and uh, and that was tough because um i was wearing multiple hats because i wrote it and directed it, but and so now i had to produce it as well um and i'm i'm in it i'm starring in it i'm i'm acting in it so um that was tough. I, I would tell people getting uh, Why Men Are Clueless made was easily, it's not even really close, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But then I always tell people, and I can't wait to do it again, um, <laughs> you know. Um, 
and um and and hopefully why men are clueless does very well and so we'll have access to more funding and stuff like this for the next one but um but um it was yeah it was difficult uh and you know ended up financing it out of pocket and um yeah it's really rough when you're wearing you know several hats <laughs> on a on a production it's 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 tough it's real tough yeah man i i can only imagine right how do you not blur the lines with that um as far as what do you mean well coming in and going okay so i need to handle this as a director but as a producer i've got these tasks i've got to learn my lines <laughs> well i mean you know the director so you know you can give yourself a little slack on that <laughs> right, yeah, right? Yeah. you're doing all of these things so you have to come car pump car part my life yeah <laughs> that's you know what I, I struggle it, with that one too compartmentalize, oh compartmentalize. yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you've got to do that to your day yeah but then you've got all of these other constraints coming at you so what what did you utilize to be able to keep that focus and get everything done so the major thing for me was pre-production became almost everything it was so important um i would sit down with my uh, director of photography and my first ad um and uh at least one of my producing partners and uh because what the way we shot it was we would shoot uh every weekend we didn't quite have the budget to right. retain everybody throughout the whole week. So, mm -hmm. and we, we didn't have the budget to keep people from other opportunities, you know? So, so we would have to shoot on weekends so that people could do whatever other jobs they had going or what have you. And then during the weekend, that's when we would shoot. So, um, but, do, but what that, uh, that was tough and it made production, you know, take a little longer than it ordinarily would. But what I was able to use to my advantage from that was being able during the week to sit down with all of these people and plan as meticulously as possible what we were going to do that weekend. Mm. So that when we got into the weekend, you know, we were it, it was there. The blueprint was right there. And most times we were able to just, we came in, everybody knew exactly what was going on. There was nothing we had to figure out. And, you know, we would just go, you know, we would you know, we, we we scouted each location extensively and took a lot of pictures and storyboarded extensively uh, during the week. So, again, you know, setups were able to go as quick as possible. And and we just so whatever issues or problems or ever whatever there may be, we took care of that during the week, you know, right. so that by the time we got to set, we didn't really have to deal with that. And then as far as the kind of switching between the director and the actor thing, um, <clears throat> what I was able to do was explain to um my first ad and my uh producing part well one of my producing partners an actor himself um and uh is, he's actually in the film uh uh derrick's brady i was able to explain to them exactly what i was looking for from my character in each scene and so when we were when i we were shooting and i was in front of the camera they would be able to watch and let me know if i was giving what what i wanted you know so right. i would explain to them this is what i'm going for this is what i'm trying to accomplish let me know if this is what you know if this is what i'm bring bringing across and yeah and so that was kind of how that you know how that worked yeah okay yeah right. boy that's a lot of work man that's a <laughs> yeah, it really of, was a lot of work it really was yeah <laughs> how yeah. many um how many weekends did it take to get this done Oh my goodness. It was, um, it was, uh, so it was two and a half months of, so, so that's eight, nine, about 12 weekends, 12 weekends. And then actually, no, I, well, with reshoots, um, I guess the total was about 14 weekends with right. reshoots. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, because people are working during the week, mm -hmm. what did you do to um, try and keep that vibe going, right? Try and keep those spirits up. Did you create um, like playlists? 
Did you give people film references? What, what what was that kind of thing? Because I can imagine there could be days when people are just tired. Yeah. Tired. Oh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'll tell you, um, if, if I'm being honest, I, there's nothing that I can say that I actually did, at least on purpose, to kind of keep the energy flowing. But the one thing I can say is, because of, you know, when I got introduced to acting, my whole thing has always been, it's about the craft, right? I mean, I take it very seriously and I, you know, I've always been very intense with it and very into it. And I was very fortunate to be able to cast people um, both, well, first of all, throughout, from my long career, I've met a lot of people and I have a lot of close friends who are extremely talented individuals, uh, themselves as actors. And so, you know, I cast them in roles that were right for them. And and then we did we did really exhaustive auditions to find the best actors possible for each role. And what that did was because they're so good, it they showed up and they were ready to work no matter what was happening. You know, they could be tired. They, they'll be tired. But then as soon as you call action, they're there. Mm -hmm. They're ready to work. And we were getting it and we were getting it done and doing a fantastic job. You know, everybody, everybody was so amazing, you know, and, and I love that because it also made me want to raise my make sure my game was uh, on point as well. You know, yeah, the kind of competitive thing like, OK, I'm not going to be out. I'm not going to be outdone in my own movie. <laughs> but but instead of like some other people I mentioned earlier who would be like, no, we can't have anybody that talented. I want that. I'm like, bring it. Let's go. Mm. You know, let's raise each other's games. You know, let's let's make this the best possible. You know, so yeah, it was really just just casting the 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 most talented actors um, as possible for each role, and really that's what um, that's what really what was able to keep it going. Uh, you know, week after weekend. Okay. Week after weekend. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Was there one character that was hard, the hardest to cast, or um, was it pretty seamless? No, um, no, it wasn't seamless. <laughs> it, it wasn't seamless. Um, the uh, all of the uh, all of the male the male leads were all pretty seamless. Um, uh, we we were all close friends, you know, in reality, anyway, and they just happened to all be extremely talented actors. Um, and and um, and and you know, they were able to bring you know, what each character, what I believed each character was, they were able to just to bring that, mm. you know, easily. So as far as the male leads, that was pretty seamless. But the the female leads, that was not seamless. We went through a lot of changes. Um, and it was, you know, for, um, so for the, um, the, the Diane character, um, who was Omar's uh, partner in the film, um, there was a different actress who who we had cast in her role initially and she was great in the auditions i mean and then we did the table reads and she was fantastic you know but we got on set and she just she wasn't very good <laughs> it just it wasn't working and i was like oh man i didn't know what to do i mean like again we had a very limited budget it's not like we and i'm like but we can't shoot this her role is so important if she's if she's not able to bring across what we need to bring across it's not it's it could tank the film um so i had to do one of the hardest things i've ever done which was fire someone and it was and it was tough you know because she really loved the script and she really wanted to be a part of it but i i had to stick to my i guess artistic integrity if you will and you know we had to do it so then we had to go and um, search for another actress. And we were really fortunate. A friend of mine, Ruben Whitmore, who is a uh, very talented director um, in his own right, um, was hearing about the issue that I was having. And he goes, hey, man, you know, I actually just finished a project and uh, we had about three or four really talented actresses. I could put you in contact uh, if, if you would like that. I said, oh, please, please. So he did that. He put me in contact and, um, you know, I reached out to all of them and we set up meetings 
And um, and then I'll never uh, forget the, the actress who ended up getting the role. We met at a Starbucks, actually. And and she walked in and we did the scenes right there in the middle of a Starbucks <laughs> and then went into we even did some improv and stuff on top of it. And she nailed it. She just nailed it. She walked in and just claimed the role and then was fantastic in the movie. So um, and um, and then, yeah, then we were just really fortunate with um, the other actresses who we cast through the uh, initial audition process were we're just, we're just, you know, they, they were really good and showed up to set and were really, were even better. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's always interesting when you, you hear stories about, you know, recasting and things like that. Because yeah. sometimes you see in a film and you'd be like, oh, that's what happened. Yeah. Right? Because you, yeah. you feel there's something's not quite right. Yeah. But then other times you'll, you'll see a film and you think that's an great film and then you hear that it, the, it was recast like a few days before and you're just like yeah, yeah. it's so good how the whoa <laughs> like, I, I just remember hearing that um Peter Jackson mm. let Stuart Townsend go and then brought in some dude called Vigo Morton and I was like <laughs> yo who I was glad that it wasn't Stuart Townsend Right. Now, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm sure Stuart Townsend is, is a good dude, but mm -hmm. I, I just never really resonated to a lot of the stuff. Right. So, right. I, so in my head, and I've, I've, as a little kid, I'd read Lord of the Rings so many times. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, man. Like when I was in uh, junior school, no, or was it infant school? It was one of them. They, um, there was a, like a, a, a theater group and they came and did the Hobbit. Like obviously a truncated version. Right. <laughs> they, they did it yeah, the, yeah. the, the short version of the Hobbit. And um, it just blew me away. Mm. And then I found out that this all, and so I read the Hobbit a load of times. Then I found out that this dude had these other books. So I was just like, oh, there's more? Yeah. Okay. So, I read Lord of the Rings. It's very different from The Hobbit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. very different yeah. to The Hobbit. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. The Hobbit yeah. is like one of those weird, you like it, it equivalent of a weird European softcore, right? Right, and right. And then yeah. you go to Lord of the Rings and it's like full on hardcore. And you're like, right. <laughs> yeah. oh shit, I wasn't yeah. expecting yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> what did yeah. they just do? You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so, but I'd read it so many times that you you have these characters in your head and you'll be like, oh, they look like this. Mm -hmm. And Durham Dora is going to look like this. Rivendell will be like this. So yeah. when I heard like Stuart Tower, I was just like, nah, is, yeah. I'm not, I don't think that's right. Right, right. But then you, when you watch it and you see how incredible Vigo was. Yo, yeah. He, I, he, I can't he, think of anyone else in that role. Is, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. That's, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that was that was his role. That that worked mm. out the way it was supposed to work out. Yeah. Because he was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. 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 And Michael J. Fox wasn't meant to be Marty McFly. N yeah. Yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean. That's mind boggling. Like, mm. I mean, well, how could that possibly? But that happens a lot. I mean, you know, the interesting thing about filmmaking is I found that with a lot of the classic films or the best films, many times it's been by accident. Mm. Yes. <laughs> it's rarely where a film is, is, you know, is, is, you know, produced the way it was initially meant to be produced or whatever, and then turns into a classic. That rarely happens. Like, most of the time, it's by accident mm. <laughs> or some unforeseen something happens and then it and it works out, you know. Um, yeah, that's uh, and 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 I can say a lot of that happened with uh, why men are clueless. It, it's it's because, like I said, it certainly was not a smooth process by any stretch. Mm. And, um, and it's just amazing how how it kind of all came together. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, yeah, no, I think that's a big thing. Sometimes it's the issue that gives you the perfect route into something yeah right yeah. because with jaws remember 
they had to change it because they couldn't get the model to work. The shark work. Yeah. Now, yeah. The, the thing that was beautiful about Jaws was you didn't see the shark. That's right. So that brought the tension. And so if the model worked, they're like, more yeah, shark. Thing. More yeah. shark. Right, right, right. More, like, more yeah. shark over there. Right, it right. Wouldn't have been the same feel. No, no. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, I, um, there's, there's sometimes there's a thing where I think when you're doing something and you're kind of, I guess, doing it with pure intentions, if you will, um, or at least being honest with yourself or honest with your vision, you know, I, I find the, the universe will kind of meet you halfway. You know, if you're, if you're being honest with your, with your, with your vision and you're really just trying to, you know, do something that you really feel good about. And the universe se se seems to have a way to kind of meet you halfway and help you get to where you're trying to get to, you know, mm -hmm. and, it, and it'll, and it'll has a way of showing you like the way you thought you, you needed to take to get there is not it. Let me show you this other way and we'll get there together, you know? So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's very <laughs> true, man. That's very yeah. true. Now, as, as we said a bit earlier, right, you worked on so many different things, mm -hmm. TV, film, video games, yeah, yeah, which is crazy. And it all, and you, and you started off like with a theater till. So yeah, what, firstly, out of all of those different things, is there one that you enjoy the most or, or what is it about these different platforms and avenues which excites you the most? Well, they're all very different. Mm. Uh, each medium is very different. You know, the interesting thing is you, you don't see it quite as much now, but when I first got into the business, uh, everybody was a specialist. Everybody yeah. specialized. So yeah. there were actors who were, oh, I only do film. That's it. Uh, some actors, I only do television. That's it. Some mm. actors. Well, I think it was looked as a downgrade, right? Yeah. You'd oh, when I when I came in, yeah, it was definitely mm -hmm. kind of like film is what you were. If you were a film actor, then that was the prestige. That's what you were. If you were to appear on television, it's like, oh, what is you know? Yeah, that was yeah. a per pervasive feeling in those days. Um, uh, but but it even filtered down to like, oh well, I only do commercials. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and and a lot of that, or I only do voiceovers. But a lot of that is because they all are very unique. They all have their very own challenges. I mean, acting in film is actually a lot different than acting on television, <laughs> you know? Um, you know, doing a uh, television commercial is way different than film or, or uh, TV. And theater is way different, <laughs> way different than all of that, you know? Yeah. So, because to answer your question about which what do I enjoy, I well, first of all, I enjoy all of them. Um, probably equally, I would have to say, because of their unique challenges. Um, I mean, theater was what I started in, and it's my first love. And unfortunately, I haven't, it's been a while, it's been some years since I've done a theater production, but I really want to do another one soon, and I really miss it. I love uh, the I love the immediate feedback from the audience um, mm -hmm. when you're doing theater. Um, you know, I, I love how the show must go on no matter what in theater. You know, you'd be surprised when you go see a live theater production how many things probably were not going to plan <laughs> during that production, but you got to just flow through it. There's no cut in theater. There's no cut and do it again or any of that. You got to get through it. You know. Yeah. And I love that challenge. I love that. It's it's exhilarating. Um, and uh, like I said, I really, really uh, am looking to and uh, we'll be getting back into doing some theater soon. So I love theater for that. Um, film is you just get to. You just get an opportunity to to be so many different people in and explore so many different places, whether they're real or, you know, fake. <laughs> um, it's, it's, um, you know, it's just a great thing. I mean, a lot of times a film you shoot out of sequence. So you might, I mean, you might shoot the end of the film on the first day of the shoot, right. You know, and that presents its own challenges. You have to really be in tune with the script mm, and, yeah. and hopefully you have a great director who can help you keep track of what, 
keep track of what's going on, um, where in the timeline of the script you are, because it is usually shot all out of order. And so to make sure your emotions are correct or, you know, a lot of times what you're shooting here may tie into something that maybe you haven't shot yet or you or you have shot or and that was a weeks ago or whatever. And so I love that challenge. It's kind of almost like a puzzle, being able to put a puzzle together um, and you just have to figure out everybody puts a puzzle together differently. You have to kind of figure out the best way what works for you and putting that puzzle together. And that's kind of the challenge I find with film. Um, and, um, you know, and and to a degree with uh, with television, too, um, you know, th there's some of that same thing in television, too. But television seems to be. Um, I mean, well, it's tough because it's changed now. Television is kind of what film used. Television now is what film used to be, <laughs> you know, right. and film is actually honestly struggling a little bit right now. Um, I think there are a lot of reasons for that, but. Um, I don't know if you want me to get into that, but just let oh, me know. If we do, but... Yeah, we we can get into everything. Oh, OK, OK, OK. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think what's happened with film over the years is. Uh, because I remember we ran into some of this with producing Why Men Are Clueless, there became this time where they started kind of imposing all of these artificial uh, uh, lengths on films, right? Mm. Like, ah, well, film, you know, you're going to lose the audience if the film is over an hour and a half or whatever, right? And so you have a lot of people, you to develop a story, many times, you need just more time with that. I mean, and I'm not sure when it happened, because I remember when I was young, there were plenty of films that were two hours, two and a half hours. I mean, it was never, you know, yeah. it was whatever it took to tell the story is what it was, you know, and there was never, and that was never a big deal, seemingly, you know. But then all of a sudden it was like, nah, it's got to be an hour 20. It's got to be yeah. this. Right, cut it down. Cut it down. All this kind of stuff. And a lot of the really talented writers said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to take my talents to television where I have a chance to actually flesh out a story and tell a real story yeah. and not have all of these artificial things imposed on me. And so I think that's why I mean, you have some directors like your Martin Scorsese's and, you know, um, your Spielberg's or who can get away with telling a story the way they want to tell it and they'll let them do it. So that's why their films are still, are still great in the theaters while so many others aren't. Um, uh, but a lot of the talented uh, writers have gone over to television because it's, you, you, you're given more of an opportunity to tell your story um, mm. and take more chances. They kind of, you know, studios got real skittish with films, right? They, they, they stopped, taking a lot of chances in the storytelling. And I think people, you know, and, and it, you know, it, it got real kind of watered down and a little boring and, and unoriginal, you know, yes. um, it started to be kind of the same thing over and over and over. And people were like, eh, you know, but television, there's a lot of variety and a lot of, you know, right now television is just really strong right now. Um, and, um, you know, so, um, Oh man, I just I kind of went blank. We were, so I was saying that to say it <laughs> <laughs> happens to me all the time. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like when people say that the cinema's dying, hmm. what do you think about that? Unfortunately, I think it's true. Um, I hmm. think it doesn't have to be that way, though. Um I just think, you know, I, I think, first of all, studio executives, when it comes to film, they need to, they need to kind of let, find a way to let artists be artists more. They, they first of all, have to take more risk and, and stop trying to, you know, a lot of kind of what corporations have come in and bought the studios and things like this. Um, uh, the stu you know, studios used to be more autonomous, you know, and so you know, they would do their own thing. And it, and it was more of a emphasis put on the creative, the creative part and all these kind of things. And then corporations kind of came in and the studios became part of different conglomerates and all this kind of stuff. And, and they started treating the films like you would treat, I don't know, if you ran a, a fast food franchise or whatever, right? Like it's just, you know, kind of took a lot of the personality out of it. And a lot of the things that made it good, they stripped it. And yeah. said, no, we, we're trying to find a way to make this as cookie cutter as possible. And we can just throw this stuff out and started putting out just inferior products, um, um, productions. And um, and so and then also at the same time, ticket prices 
started going through the roof. I mean, yeah, it, you know, it become it became it, be, it's, it, be, it has become really expensive to go to a movie. I mean, you're mm. here, here in Los Angeles. I mean, you know, you're it's seventeen, eighteen dollars a ticket. You know, yep. you, even if you go to a matinee, it's still fourteen, fifteen bucks. <laughs> you yeah. know, I mean, you it's know, if, a it's, similar thing over here, man. It's yeah, yeah. Thing. Is the cinema used to be the cheap date? Right, yeah, the cheap exactly. thing to do. You didn't have a lot of money. Be like, yeah. yo, should we just go see a film this weekend? Be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Let, exactly. let's. Have that. Yep. Right, growing up, I could go to the cinema, buy um buy my train ticket there, so get mm -hmm. a travel card. Right, have money left over to go get a panda pop and some penny sweets. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. For five pounds. That's right. Five yeah pounds man yeah and you're yeah. seeing films all the time and it was great yeah oh yeah you, you i don't think you can buy a drink in a cinema for five pounds now. <laughs> no. <laughs> like it's, it's oh silly. no it's ridiculous no. it's yeah it's absurd it's absurd and so when you put those two things together it it, it represents the death of you know of of uh the theatrical of, of the movie mm. uh, and, yeah is you know. when like cinema chains were closing during lockdown mm -hmm. it i did feel that they a few of them brought it on themselves oh, right yeah. because Absolutely. you know the prices of cinemas going through the roof right mm -hmm. I, I worked at a cinema when i was at university and if you went to a normal news agents like a bag of skittles might be 80p in the cinema, they were two ninety nine. <laughs> right, it's like yeah. over a hundred percent markup. Yeah. It, it's yeah. insane. So yeah. you have these ridiculous prices. You then have people fucking around in screens, mm -hmm. like make, yeah. so. You're trying to watch a film, and right. then there's people running around making noise on their phone, and the cinema is doing nothing to stem that. Right. So right. you're yeah. just like, you know what? I might as well just rent something at home. Exactly. I'll, I'll wait for it to come on VOD. Because exactly. Yeah. The experience at the cinema is so poor. Yeah. Like you have these, you know, the, these real nice chains like the Everyman, Curzon. Mm. There's a few cinemas where the experience is better. Right. Yeah. And yeah. people will go to those ones because people want to see something. There's a magic about seeing a film live. Oh, right? yes, it is. Yeah. You know? yeah. I, yeah. I remember in Endgame when, you know, if all, the, all the heroes, like, start coming together and everyone's just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or, or that yeah. in Civil War when Black mm -hmm. Panther and Spider-Man appear. Yeah. Like, Yo, what? Yeah. And you hear everyone around you be like, <gasps> And, yeah. and this is just incredible with being in those rooms. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it um, is. It's a, it's a wonderful experience. It really is. It really is. Um, you know, and, and so I, I hope that, uh, you know, better minds will prevail and prevent it from, a, you know, dying out all the way. You know, um, hopefully that won't happen. But, uh, yeah, they're definitely going to have to, you know, put some put some thought into, you know, what needs to be done to kind of correct the correct that course yeah 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 i think it's about curating the experience more i absolutely yeah. agree yeah 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 but yeah i think as long as we have good content coming out that's yeah i mean that's that's, 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 that's the foundation yeah. yeah and i think that's always the thing for me when it comes to time right because if i'm watching a good film you don't even notice the time. You don't even man. notice it. That's you right. You don't notice yeah. the time, man. It, it, right. it's, it's like, oh, man, that was great. You'd be like, wait, that was three hours? Right. Was yeah, yeah. Three hours? Yeah. Like, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Or there's some films that are like 90 minutes, and you're just like, Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs> like, I, is it still I going? Yeah. Two and a half hours. And you're like, right. oh, it's only 90? Right. Oh, I thought it was yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's so true. Yes, yeah, 
yeah. you know, because I, I like these conversations. I remember someone early on saying to me that, oh man, like you probably want to keep them short because they're like they're, no one wants to listen to something, you know, over an hour. Right. And I'm just like, yo, if it's interesting, if it's interesting. Yeah, listen. Exactly right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, because yeah. those, I, I always got frustrated with those 10 minute, five minute, 15 minute interviews. Yeah. Because you didn't learn anything. No. You're just like, yeah, I mean, I, I know that. Like, right. <laughs> I just wasted my time here. Like, right, what, exactly. Yeah. What was that? You know, yeah. like, you want to hear them talk about the process. Like, how yes. did they bring that character to life? Like, yes. oh, how yeah. did you capture those shots? Like, what yeah. was the, and you're just hearing, yeah, so um, my dog is called, uh, <laughs> you're going to laugh at this. <laughs> right, oh, yeah, exactly. It's called Hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. Like, oh. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I just think, you know, you create something compelling, mm -hmm. people will gravitate to that. Absolutely. You know? And you Absolutely. just tell the story about what you've done, right? Mm -hmm. There's these marketing budgets are, they're insane, man. They're, <laughs> they're yeah. insane. They're, yeah. I mean, I mean, the marketing budgets are as much or sometimes even more than the actual film, yeah. <laughs> than the budget yeah. of the film. I mean... Yeah, the marketing is, whoo, yeah. But yeah. that's what I do in the corporate world, right? So I, when you hear about these budgets, I'm sometimes like, okay, if you had that much, what did you actually do? Because what I've seen yeah. doesn't warrant that budget. No. <laughs> like, I don't, I do, so I feel someone's just ripped you off because. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's interesting about that is, I found that many times budget restraints or constraints, I should say, produce better projects, produce mm. better results because it forces you to be more creative. I mean, yes. this is all supposed to be a creative endeavor anyway, right? A lot of times if you have unlimited money, you can just get whatever you want. A lot of times it's not it's not creative anymore. You're mm. just like, I don't know, we'll do this and it kind of becomes, ah, just throw money at it. And you get kind of a bloated something that's usually not worth what they what they put into it. But a lot of times when you have to be creative to, to figure out a certain way to do something and you can't just throw money at it, you got to find a creative solution. It, 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 it uh, produces better results, uh, I've, I've found. Oh, so yeah, I think a lot, of these, a lot of these budgets don't need to be anywhere near what they are. They mm. just don't. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Especially yeah. when it's a big franchise because people yeah. know what it is. Exactly. Yeah. So, stop doing these weird adverts and weird collabs. Right. Just right. make me compelled to see it. Exactly. Right? What, yeah. What's the big USP from the last one? Right. What's the hook? Give me that. Give me that. Yeah. And I'm there. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. 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 But, yeah. Like when you were thinking about this film mm. what were though what were the kind of things that you thought would be that usp would be the thing that was different and would bring people to you know consume it well uh well when i first wrote it, when i wrote the first draft it was just it being a, a black romantic comedy <laughs> right was the thing yeah. that was the uniqueness right there um but then uh, by the time I was producing it and there had been uh, a, a bevy of uh, black romantic comedies that had been released, um, the uniqueness that I thought would draw people in were these were all kind of, you know, personal stories. Right. These these weren't stories you couldn't you, you couldn't find another film where these stories were told or, or handled in this specific way. Um, and it's very honest. Um, you know, I really, I didn't want to get into any tropes. Uh, I didn't want to, you know, get into, you know, I, I just wanted it to be very honest. I didn't want to, you know, do something just because it looked cool or sounded cool or whatever. I, I just wanted it to serve the story and to be, you know, very honest, right? Like I, I, 
one of the things I said, I was a, fi- a fan of Woody Allen's uh, movies. And one of the things I've always enjoyed about his films is he he's not afraid to tackle his insecurities. Right. Mm. And, he'll, and, and there's a lot of humor that comes out of that because a lot of that stuff is stuff that everybody feels, but people don't want to talk about that. Right. Like that's not, I don't want to, that's not cool. That's not whatever, but that's what makes it unique. You know, that's what's, you know, that's what's, that's what's great. People want to see something that they can relate to somehow. And, um, and so that's what I, that's what I uh, tried to do with why men are clueless. And, you know, we're just wanted to just try to be very honest with it and deal with a lot of my insecurities when it comes to relationships and stuff like that. And, you know, and, um, and from the audiences that have seen it, uh, thus far, it uh, it worked. It seems like I've I've touched some chords. I've touched some chords. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I think um, another question I feel people probably want to know is when did you stop naming your underwear? <laughs> <laughs> because when that shit was dropped, I was like, "Yo, what? <laughs> I've never done that." Like, <laughs> really? It's just me. I just <laughs> I'm not using a safety pin. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I don't want a pin anywhere in that region, my friend. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, 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 yes, I, I know what you mean because I'm. I had a couple of unfortunate incidents, but anyway, um, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, that was, uh, I kind of got, a, that was in my college days, uh, <laughs> where I just didn't have money to buy new, uh, underwear and things of this like this. And so I just, I kept them for as long as I could, man. I, I you know, <laughs> I had to do what I had to do, you know. And, but sometimes, though, that was really comfortable. You know, sometimes I would get a new pair and I'd be like, oh, man, these things, <laughs> these hurt. I, I miss my old ones, you know, like, so, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm glad you said it was in your college days, but you yeah. like, oh, that was 2021. I mean, right. like, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. I got a safety pin on right now. It's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god! <laughs> like, what is it? What is it like when you do open yourself up like that and put a lot of yourself out there for people just to be able to consume and judge? What's the, what is scary. that like, it's, man? It's scary. It's very scary. Um, it's uh, it's humbling. <laughs> it's oh man, I, it's um, and it's weird, you know. Um, you just yeah it's it's i think those are the three words it's scary humbling and weird you know you just you know it's scary because you're like man you know I, you, i'm telling people my business really i mean it's like nobody well i don't know i don't know maybe these days with social media that seems to be the norm now everybody tells everybody all their business uh, now, but, yeah <laughs> but that's not me you know i'm not i'm not you know <laughs> i'm from a time where you know putting all your business out there is not you know it's not mm-hmm. good so um so for me yeah that's very scary like and and weird like ah oh, man i you know i i i consider myself a, a pretty private person so that was where the weirdness came out you know it was like eh, you know i mean i mean i i really don't have a heavy presence on social media you know i mean you can find me on social media but you're not going to find a bunch of posts <laughs> cuz i i'm just not on there that often it's just not me um <laughs> but you know so so that's that was weird um a weird feeling and um and and but then at the same time you're just like well i you know you you want people to get something out of it though you hope that people get something out of it you know that it you know even if it's just to maybe make them laugh or or think you know um yeah so yeah okay and like um with loved ones 
right? There's certain stories you want to tell, but it's like, oh, it's connected to this person. Yeah. Like, yeah. was there a lot of negotiation? Were there like certain things that you needed a promise? You know what I mean? Like um, holidays or trips? <laughs> <right? laughs> no, not too much because the only person who uh, I'm still, I guess, close with uh, from all of those experiences, really, who, who you know, is, is my wife. I mean, you know, a lot of this is stuff that, you know, we went through when we were dating and all of these kind of things. And um, she just uh, didn't really care. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's nothing in it that makes her look bad. Anyway, I yeah. was clearly the idiot. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so she, yeah, you know, so she didn't care. Um, and you know, as far as everybody else, I don't, I, I don't really keep in contact with a lot of them anymore, anyway. So you know, then, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh dear, dear. Oh man, it's but like, what's it been like, you know, doing the festival circuit, having people consume it, like, you know, working on it for all this time, and now it's out in the world. You know, be, because it's been such it, because it's been received so well, um, it's been it's been exhilarating. You know, it's um, there's so much work that went into it. And, you know, when you do something like and it's and it's it, it's it's an exercise. It's a, what do you call it? An exercise of love. I mean, it's you know, it's. um my goal was just to put something out there that I, you know, that, that I really loved, you know, I crafted something that I loved and I wanted to share it and, and, um, and then to have it be received so well, um, has, has just been really exhilarating, you know? Um, um, but I can say the one thing is it's been received so well, it has made it a little difficult with writing my next uh project <laughs> because now it feels like i mean it's it's all in my head of course but now it feels like man the bar is way up here right mm -hmm. like you kind of want you want everything you do to be received as well as this right but there's no <laughs> you, you don't know that and and when if being reasonable if i look at it every director everyone you know spike lee the great director has films everybody loves and he has films that people go what what was that you know um but that's every director i you know but it is kind of, you know, that Why Men Are Clueless is my first feature, and it and it you know it went over like it's going over like gangbusters, and and um, it, it it's made it like oh man okay now I feel like there's this there's a certain expectation now people have, <laughs> so it, it has made it a little difficult with writing um, the stuff that I'm writing now and stuff like that. I have to kind of get out of my head about that and be a little bit more courageous and just go just just go for it and see what happens, you know. Um, but so, yeah, so it's been exhilarating and, um, um, a little, uh, I guess fear inducing. <laughs> For, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we we won't have to wait 26 years for the next one right no 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 <laughs> no no, no uh, <laughs> like is there a particular genre that you're kind of interested in exploring or is it more about the story so whatever the whatever story comes to you that's yeah. where it will be yeah, I try to never ever think uh, in terms of genre. Um, you know, uh, even once a story hits me, and it's and it and it feels like something that I want to write. Um, even during the writing process, I, I try to stay away from any thoughts of genre. Mm. Um, it just feels limiting to me. You know, um, you know they say rules are rules are you know it's good to know the rules but then rules are meant to be broken too i mean it's how you find find something new it's how you <coughs> yes I, I really try to never think in terms of genre um i just think in terms of story and how to serve the story best whatever that means you know to me yeah yeah okay but you have a story just dating in the mind right Oh, I have a f I have several actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm actually writing two right now, but I have several. So okay. yeah, I have several. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. So there's a few things that might be coming our way soon. Oh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Old film, any TV, and any, any uh, both, both. Uh the two projects that I'm writing right now are both uh for television. Oh, um no. and then um I have the next film that I'm going to write is actually I did a short one of the short films I did was called Dreaming. Um, and it did really well uh, on the festival circuit, won a lot of awards and stuff like this. But I want to I want to turn that into a feature. And uh, so right. so once I finish writing uh, these television pilots, I'm going to uh, develop that into a feature. And that'll probably be um, the next thing that I shoot and, and get out, um, because for the television pilots, you know, it'll be shopping it around to the television yeah. networks to see if, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what about the theater stuff? Do you want to write something or just performing? I think just perform. Uh, I seem to think very um, in terms of film and television. That seems to, when it comes to the writing, that seems that's where my mind is. Mm. Um, not to say that I couldn't do stage. I mean, it would probably be a very interesting exercise to try to write a stage play and see what happens. But, but, but I definitely right now I don't necessarily have any interest in doing that. Um, I really just want to perform on stage. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and voiceover work. You know what I mean? Yeah, I love voiceover work. I do a lot of it. Uh, as you mentioned, I've I've done a ton of video games. Um, have a couple coming out. Uh, that I just recorded not long ago. Um, <clears throat> um, and um, yeah, you hear. I mean, you hear my voice all the time. I do a lot of voiceover commercials and stuff like this. So uh, yeah, no, I, I love doing voice voiceover. I I'm I'm looking forward to doing another cartoon. I've um, it's a, voiceover is a very hard nut to crack in terms of getting in. Mm. Um, and, uh, and so it took a long time, but you know, cause I, I was doing voice voiceover for a good, probably 11 years before I got my first opportunity to do a cartoon. And, yep. uh, then I did a few cartoons, which, which were great. Uh, like yeah. I did Wee Bear Bears and, uh, I did a cartoon called Hanazuki. Um, which was a Mattel, a Mattel cartoon that people really loved. And that was fun because I got to play several different characters. Um, and one time I, and for one, and one episode I did, I was five different characters in that same episode. <laughs> which was like, yeah, that was a lot of fun. That, that was a lot of fun to do. Um, you know, so, and, and, and what I really love about voiceover too is that it's really about your talent, you know, your look, it has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Mm, yes. um, I did. Uh, I did. I voiced a Middle Eastern character for the Fast and the Furious cartoon, which is on Netflix. Ah. Um, you know, I, I'm not Middle Eastern, but I can do a Middle Eastern accent. And so, <laughs> you know, and I, so I was able to perform and be that character, which is great. You know, it's, you, I, I really love that about that. I wish there was a way to make, you know, film and television more that way. Um, but uh, yeah, no. Yeah. So I love voiceover, though. Yeah. Okay. Like, what? I was gonna say, what you know? What do you consider maybe the hardest thing to do out of all the different things that you know? Because you were you're wearing a lot of hats, man. <laughs> you're wearing a lot of hats. So, like, what? Like, you enjoy them all, but mm -hmm. what is the biggest challenge out of them? And not well, it doesn't necessarily have to be the hardest, but what is the thing where you have to kind of really focus the most? Like try and find that thing to be able to put yourself in that place. Um, well, as far as the acting goes, the biggest thing for me is is sometimes getting out of my head. Mm. Um, there are some times where I just get really stuck and maybe overthink something, right? Um, ideally, what I would like to do is make choices about the character and then and then let it fly, let it rip, you know. But sometimes I get a little too bogged down. I, I, I little start thinking about it, overthinking it, you yeah. know. And so that is the biggest challenge I find as far as the acting. 
Um, but as far as just overall, what's the most challenging thing for me entertainment wise is certainly writing. Um, writing is extremely challenging for me. It's just it's intimidating, even though I've to, at this point I've written a lot, but it still is intimidating now is the first time I it was to be honest, it was probably easier the first time <laughs> that I wrote anything. That was probably the easiest time I ever had writing was the, the first time I ever wrote anything. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's tough. Uh, I sometimes I tell people, you know, each, and I might, there might have been an author I heard say this too, and I really related to it. But as sometimes it feels like every word is like giving blood. <laughs> it's just like each word is like giving a little more blood. Like it's tough. It's a challenge, and, and you know, and there are a lot of reasons for it because even though ideally you want to do it for yourself, right? I mean, you hope people like it, but. Yes. If you're trying to do it for other people, you're kind of putting yourself in a bad position. You have to do it for yourself and then just hope people respond well to it, you know. But that's that's a lot easier said than done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, a lot yeah. easier said yeah. than done. And so that's yeah. the big challenge for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. But it sounds like there's a, a lot of writing coming. Absolutely. A lot yeah. more acting coming, a lot of voice oh, yeah. coming. Yes, there's, there's a lot of Avery yes. out in the world. Yes, yes, outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. outstanding. Now, before I let you go, Ram, mm -hmm. what are you looking forward to the most, film-wise, in 2024? Um, <coughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm just, I think with Why Men Are Clueless, kind of getting an opportunity to be exposed to its widest audience um, to date. I'm very much looking forward to, to, to the feedback, um, you know, from the, from this wider scale, you know, um, um, I, and then I'm looking forward really, I think the biggest thing I'm looking forward forward to in, in 2024 film wise is, uh, is getting the next uh, film production going, um, getting the next uh, production up in, up in uh being shot getting it shot actually i really so the film that i was telling you about i my plan is to uh get that script written and ready to produce and get all of that done in in 2024 so yeah nice yeah yeah, yeah. oh man well you're definitely gonna have to keep us posted with that oh, i absolutely man. will i absolutely will yeah oh, tremendous tremendous so <clears throat> The film's dropping on the 5th of January. January 5th, yes, yes. It will be in theaters uh, in here in the United States. Um, I, hopefully at some point uh, soon, sooner than later, it'll, you know, we'll be able to get into some theaters uh, there in, in, uh, in London and other places around the world. But uh, January 5th, it's being released in theaters uh, in, here in the United States. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it will be, and, I, and I'll, I'll keep you posted, but after it's done with its theatrical run, um, it will be put on some uh, some more uh, video on demand platforms as well. So, you know, if you don't, if for people who are watching, if you don't get the opportunity to see it in the theater, uh, it will be, um, you will be able to stream it uh, from someplace soon. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> And so how can people keep track of what you're doing, man? Because you're doing a lot. So how, <laughs> how can people follow you? Well, you can't, you like, so I have uh, an Instagram and uh, and a Facebook. They're both Avery Kid Waddell. I, I believe my name is on the screen. So you, just, you put that in and I'll pop up on both uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook. And also you could go to... Um, uh, because I don't post often, <laughs> you can also go to uh, IMDb, um, which uh, keeps track. Uh, sometimes I have to go to IMDb to check myself what I'm up to. <laughs> I don't know how they do it, but they they are on top of it. <laughs> they they are on top of it. So you can go there and and you'll be able to see exactly everything that I'm up to and have coming up. So yeah, those are the best ways. Okay, so people. The all the links are on the website, other than his OnlyFans. I've got all the other links in <laughs> there. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> <Yeah>. 
Uh, but yeah, no, all, all the links. So go follow Avery. Go check him out and yes, mark please. the fifth of January on the calendar. Yes, because that's when the film drops, people. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, outstanding, man. Well, thank you very much for your time. Really, thank you. Thank really you. This, was, this was a lot of fun. I is this is great. I want to I want to do another project just so I can uh, so we can have another interview, man. This is this was fun. <laughs> I, hey, I'm glad you've enjoyed yourself, man. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's interesting because you you haven't been clueless. So I, I you know what I mean. I I, I, I mean somebody <laughs> needs to change the name of this film again because <laughs> I, I'm not sure men are clueless. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. I thank you. <laughs> uh, oh boy. Well, people, as I say, go check out the film. Go follow Avery and uh, start the year off right. Yes. Well, yes. All right, yeah. man. Well, thank you for your time. Have a tremendous Christmas and a new well. year. And I'm sure. Absolutely. 2024 is just gonna be huge for you yes 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 thank you all right you as well enjoy your christmas and new year as well and and yeah yeah and big things for you in 2024 as well let's let's yeah let's let's do this thing <laughs> yes 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 my man yes, let's sir. do it all right <laughs> all right thank all right. you man thank you